This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by the Made to Measure Leggings class from SewHere.com. This online class brings ZD right into your sewing room to show you how to measure, draft, and construct a pair of leggings based on your personal measurements. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings to find out more and get access to all the videos and course materials immediately. That's SewHere.com slash leggings. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Mallory Donahue. This is ZD Donahue. And we're going to do a little podcast on pockets here. Now, this will not be like an exhaustive history of pockets or anything like that because there's so much information out there about pockets, right? Well, here's the deal about history or um, the history of clothing or history of anything like that that is social. Yeah. Have you ever read the history of uh, blue and pink, you know, boy versus girl? Yeah, yeah. You know, and one of the things, I can't think <laughs> of the one article I read about it, you know, and the author said it wasn't one thing that decided, you know, that boys were in blue and girls were in pink. Right. It evolved. It, it wasn't like, well, this year it was decided that girls wore pink. Yeah. Yeah, because babies wore white for years. Yeah. And you couldn't tell if a baby was a boy or a girl. They wore little white dresses, and that was it till you know, they were up walking. Right. And even after they were walking. So I think what we need to think about histories is they're not always the same. They're not always the same in every culture. And they're not always remembered or documented, you know, they're subjectively done. Yeah, absolutely. So there's like a lot of resources on pockets out there. Right. Um, but one thing, so this is one of my little side interests. I am very interested in languages and I am listening to the History of the English Language podcast or History of English podcast, I think is what it's called. And so those of you who have studied English or our linguistic majors like Jennifer out there, um, you already know this, but it's something that I found out is that English and, um, you know, English is a Germanic language, and it used to be thought that the Germanic languages and the Romance languages were, like, absolutely separate, and uh, but right. they are not. They're all linked together by this original Indo-European language, which actually links, like, Sanskrit together with, like, Latin, and, you know, so our languages are much more related than was, you know, originally thought. Now, when I say originally, like, this, this discovery was made in what, like, the hold on the 1800s or something it's not like that new um but <laughs> it well, was 1800s in the, in the history of man it was yeah. it was new right. to me uh right. you know and so anyway i've been really loving it when the podcast host will kind of talk about the origin of a word um and things like that so uh pocket seems to be kind of an old word that has celtic roots and it's very similar in English and French so that means that uh is that it, why it ends in et well no <laughs> actually because yeah. in French it's poche you know oh, okay. uh, but the the French you know uh Frankish plus the Latin you know uh, influence that influences there means that there are some words that came from the Celtic languages into English and French but then also came back into English through the Norman invasion and all this stuff. So anyway, I'm going to put some links to the oh etymology my gosh, of the word oh my pocket. Gosh. No, it's very confusing, yeah. and I may not have said it right. So no, right. don't criticize me. But I'll isn't go back. that amazing, like, that even that information sort of floating okay. around? I am so fascinated by this. They, like, go back and reconstruct right. words from, right. like, languages that we don't even know about anymore, and I think it is just so freaking cool. Uh, so definitely just makes makes my heart sing a little bit. But it literally meant a bag, a pouch, a small sack, okay? Sort uh, of like a vessel. Germanic source akin to Frankish, poka mm -hmm. or paka bag from the Proto-Germanic puk, P-U-K is what they have. So we've got like, this is an old word. People have been having pockets for a long time. Well, and right? Why well, do they have to have pockets? purses were called pocket That's books. Right. 
so, they weren't called purses. So a purse yeah. and a pocket, like all of these words right. are very related. And early pockets that were not sewn into clothing. Right. Like they were called, they may have been called pockets, but they would resemble maybe what we would think they, of as a purse. They were a fanny pack. They were the original fanny pack. Right. Yes. They went like, you know, there was somewhere where they went around your waist or uh, Kind of like shoulder bags, you know, a cross body. I wonder if like a gr- cross body purse. You I know, see, I, I'm seeing right. them a lot in these illustrations on belts, like peasants yes. have them. Yes, you know, to yes, things. like it would go through a belt uh, loop. Utsi, those of you who are history buffs, know Utsi was unearthed. He is also known as Iceman, one of the oldest, uh, like preserved bodies. He had that pockets. We have found. He had here. Let's see from the Wikipedia article. Ancient people used leather or cloth pouches to hold valuables. Utsi, also called Iceman, who lived around 3300 BCE, had a belt with a pouch sewn to it that contained a cache of useful items, a scraper, drill, flint flake, bone awl, and a dried fungus. So, so. to me, that was more like a tool belt. Yeah. And, and that is actually what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I can't come up with the time period, but I know that, I remember researching this one time that, you know, the lady of the house or the head servant in the yeah. house, you know, they had chatelaines where mm-hmm. they had keys, keys on the chatelaine yeah. and they would have a pouch that had other things specific to their job. So they would take that pouch on and off and yeah. it would go. I mean, they didn't always have that many garments, but, right. you know, if one garment was being laundered, they still had their pouch yeah. you know, with the stuff contained and, and in it. Let's just move on. Let's just jump forward several yeah. thousand years, okay, to an 18th century woman's hanging pocket that I'm seeing here on the. Which is a fanny pack? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and a fanny right. pack that be, would be, wouldn't be seen. Right, right. Would be worn the, under worn underneath the garment. We, we used to call those money belts. That's where you hid your did money. We, okay, remember? Did, we shared a long time ago that video of the woman dressing in like 18th right. century garb, mm-hmm. and so so beautiful. I'll try to share it again. Uh, and she puts, she ties on these pockets. Yes. And there are slits. There's in the only skirt. slits in right. There's slits in the garment, and then you get to you the may pocket. Reach your pocket. Right. So this could go. On to you, you, so your every garment would basically have access right to these pocket bags. Um, and even though they wouldn't be seen, this one in the article is like beautifully embroidered, probably from someone you know from a very high right. social class. Of course, that's a lot of the clothing that will survive and, right. and you know be preserved. Um, are things that wouldn't be worn to death or things right. that were very special. Um, so that's really neat, and those, those would be tied on around the waist. Uh, and so it wasn't necessarily all the time that po- that garments wouldn't have pockets. They would have access to the pockets. Right. 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 And I thought about this. I was like, that sounds like a good idea because sewing pockets onto a garment I think is really time consuming. I'm always like, oh, yeah. I could mm-hmm. skip the pockets and have this done faster. But then I'd be mad that I didn't have the pockets. Right. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm I'm always playing that game. In my brain. Right. I'm always like, should I take So the, the other thing we <laughs> could probably talk about, though, too, is the po- pockets are functional. Yeah. And they are also treated as embellishments mm-hmm. or to add style or line to a garment. Yeah. And uh, the, so this beer pocket uh, uh, thing beer comes up. Beer pocket? Beer. B-E-E-R. Like drinking a beer. Yes. Also a very old word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that... Uh, it's a small pocket within a jacket or vest sized specifically for transporting a bottle of beer. Came into fashion in the 1910s in areas of the American Midwest prior to Prohibition, after which it faded into relative obscurity before experiencing minor revivals in the 1980s and early 2000s. Imagine, so, yes. Yeah, people want that beer pocket. Also, David Hockney is a very famous visual artist of our time, and he has begun, uh, he's very. He's a very old man at this point. I think he might be in his 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. And he adopted using the iPad to do visual illustrations, like Uh do do visual art, which was like, whoa, from a lot of people. Right, right. You know, 80, okay? That was, okay, when people started doing like desktop publishing and art on computers, it was like, no, you have to draw it out. You know, oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. You know, it was like, 
when Picasso broke the rules kind right. of thing, you know. So, um, yeah, no, desktop publishing was terrible. It was awful. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. so David Hockney actually had a special pocket sewn into his blazers where he could put his iPad sure. so that he could use it. So I thought I'd uh, bring that up. So special pockets um, are are nothing nothing new, but then also new for uh, being able to carry different types of technology or different well, types of use. Well, I, I actually was um, wound up kind of looking at something the other day, and it was, you know, clothing, specialty clo- clothing for people who had things like gastric tubes yeah. or, um, you know. Uh, pumps or Pumps or like ostomy that. pouches or all this. And, you know, we use pockets to contain some of those, you know, things and not have to, like, just carry them. Okay, so in terms of sewing, um, we, uh, let's start off with, like, one of the most basic contemporary pockets uh, that's that are out there. I, uh, not a lot of people are wearing pocket bags, like, tied around their waist <gasps> underneath but their Supposedly, hoosters. though, the fanny pack is bad. The fanny, yeah, the fanny pack. I, they don't call it, they have a new name, I think. Yeah. But uh, I don't know what it's also, called. Also, to our UK and Australian listeners. Yeah, we know that's the wrong term We know term it's a bad you. word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Also speaks to your point, Mom, about time and place and how that affects culture. Your, yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. So patch pocket. This is the pocket where where you got a garment and then you just take like a piece of fabric and you sew it up so you that there's slap it on there. There's still access yep. to it, but there you know, there's an opening where you can put the thing in there. Okay. So it it may not it's have a, it's sewn down on three sides and the top is open. Well, I didn't want to say three sides because I was oh. like, what if somebody's got a hexagon pocket or <laughs> Well and it doesn't have to be a four sided pocket. No. I've made pockets out of hearts and circles yes. and all kinds of things. And this is where if you um I'll just go to advanced pocket making technique right now, just right off the bat. If you want to make a cool shaped pocket, um one way to do that is to not, like, let's pretend you want to make a heart, okay? Um, instead of making a heart and trying to sew it down, you know, in certain places and top stitch around it to finish the edges, what we would do to make a heart pocket is put a buttonhole right, uh, or an eye, you know, some kind so of opening. So we would have two layers of fabric, uh-huh. Put right a sides hole together, one but one of them would have a buttonhole in it. Yeah, one of those layers has a buttonhole. And that would be the, in, wind up being the inside of the pocket. You sew around the entire heart shape. You get to make your whole complex, curvy, pointy right. shape. And then you get to turn out that shape through the buttonhole so that you don't have any area of the edge of the heart that you have that to you had to up. hand stitch yeah. or top stitch or whatever like if and, you want to make a banana right. looking pocket or a right. pear or now, an apple and you can you can hand stitch or hand whip yep. that buttonhole um together if you want yep i've never had to or you could leave it as a yet another secret pocket that's right i've <laughs> actually a pin will go into it too like uh-huh. if you put a pin in your pocket but um i actually developed that when I was like a teenager. Right. And they had all these cute pockets on things, you know, and I was like, this is awful. Like, I have to stop. I want to make 14 garments this weekend, you right. know, wear to school next week or whatever. And um, that's when I actually developed that. I was like, how can I get a slit in this? That it, And I was like, a buttonhole. This uh, lining the pocket like that, too. So let's think about a very right. common unlined pocket, which would be the jeans, the back pocket mm-hmm. on a pair of, you know, jeans, dungarees, right. whatever, you know, you want to call them. Okay. So that's all where the edges are folded in and pressed right. and stuff. If you wanted to get a bit of a cleaner look, maybe even right. a more durable pocket. I don't you know. You do get a more durable pocket. You can. Yeah, you can line it. You can. Yeah. Um, and you really don't wind up with that much more bulk on the sides. I think that, you, yeah, and on the top, if you did it the right way, you could wind up with less bulk. Well, and you what know. you do on the top is you make it short. You right. make the lining shorter, shorter on the than, top yeah. so that, you know, the, the outer fabric, right. the public fabric, you know, folds down into that a That's little right. bit. That's mm-hmm. right. And so you could line that if you want to. Of course, you don't have to. It's stitched down. Right. Um, you, don't, you know, most patterns don't even have you finish those edges before you press them in because it gets, like, right. two layers of top stitching, right. and that does the trick. I... So. I was big on pockets when I was talking about that era when I was like in junior high, high school, and I yeah. was making a lot. Um, and my pockets were embellishments. I mean, they were functional. Yes, you could, you know, 
they were open at the top somehow. Yeah. But I was I was big on po- pockets. I had, you know, this one little sheath dress I wore over and over, princess line sheath dress uh, pattern that I had, you know, made to fit me perfectly. And I just had all these pockets in all these, like, cute places and different yeah. shapes and, and whatever. And people were like, where do you get your clothes? I mean, it was really silly because... It was just the. It was just that little shape that people were like impressed by. Mom's just trying to say that she was hot. Well, no, it, no, is <laughs> but I, I didn't know that people would be that impressed. Honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's yeah. a patch pocket, okay? Um, there are also let's just talk about like welt pockets, uh-huh. or sometimes these will be called. There, there. I would put these all kind of in the same category welt or like a tailored pocket Mm -hmm. um wikipedia is calling this one like a flap pocket Uh but it's right it's where the you know the fabric is slashed and then a pocket bag is applied that's right behind it behind it it's finished somehow either with welts or with a flap or something like that sometimes it's bound with fabric yes so there's there are all sorts of things like that and i think those those end up being challenging to the new uh-huh. sewer yeah, a lot they of the do. time and they yeah. are challenging i yeah. mean right yeah. rightfully so uh and they're also scary because you're just cutting right that's right, right. In you're cutting right in your big your, piece of garment to your garment that may be yep. like it could be finished I guess, you know? well <laughs> and it's usually a place that shows <laughs> right yes exactly uh it's also easy to really like distort those um mm-hmm areas uh it can be hard to sew in those very tight areas but i would say one one place that has a really good tutorial on that is the vogue sewing book um it's what i look at oh okay uh it's a lot of the time now i did for some reason after you do a few things like this for me like i haven't done millions of welt pockets but after i'd done a few i started to be like oh i get it right and right for uh, a, a show that I costumed recently, I had to add a welt pocket to a vest that was already you needed made. a watch pocket or yes, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A pocket. It was a pocket watch pocket, right? Yep. And it was. It needed to be added to a vest that was already made and it was lined. Right. So like I was really working backwards right. there. You know, um, the lining had already been applied, and I actually added it without messing up the lining or right. messing up anything. And I was really proud of myself. So. <laughs> It does. Start oh well, to maybe make Mallory's sense. bragging. I can't talk I'm about bragging. my pockets. No, but I'm, I feel I'm feeling free to compliment you on see, your pocket. I was. Mallory. I hope it was clear that when I said that you were, you know, hot, you know what, that I was complimenting you. Oh okay? yeah, uh-huh. it was, it was so being, clear. Not being rude. Yeah. Now sometimes these welt pockets, the pocket bag can be like loose in the garment. Yes. Or pocket bags of all types of pockets, they could be stitched down. Mm-hmm. Even if they're not patch pockets. So you think of a patch pocket as being like, you know, fabric that is applied to the garment. But even a pocket bag that's behind the garment, um, they could maybe just use one layer of fabric and then use the outside of the garment as, you know, the containing right. other layer as that facing layer. And you can top stitch it down. Or I've seen them where, like, it's a pocket bag that is stitched then to the garment so if you've ever had trouble with like a floppy pocket bag you could choose in your garment to like stitch it to the garment you could make it decorative you could try to make it invisible you'll see on coats where pocket bags are secured with a crochet chain right right you know to the um to some part of the right. garment to just to keep that bag from flipping out when you take your hand That's out right. of it and stuff like that. So let's take a break and we'll come back and talk about inseam and slash pockets. Hey ZD, wouldn't it be cool if everyone who listened to this podcast could learn how to make perfectly fitting leggings directly from you, the leggings expert? Well, yes, Mal. That's why we produce the Made to Measure Leggings class. I teach anyone, no matter their age, ability, or gender, to make perfectly fitting leggings based on their measurements. And if someone is feeling particularly generous, they can make leggings for anyone who they can get to stand still long enough to measure. 
You, yes you, can get immediate access to all the videos and course materials in the Made to Measure Leggings class by going to SewHere.com slash leggings. This online class allows you to complete the process at your own pace, and you own it forever, so you can rewatch it as many times as you need. Stop struggling with the leggings that roll down or sag in the wrong places. I'll be your guide as you create leggings that are made especially for you. No matter what your equipment or skill level, ZD covers everything from measuring, drafting, cutting, and construction on a sewing machine or serger in this class. Go to SewHere.com slash leggings and get started today. Sewing out loud. Okay, and we're back. These, these types of pockets also give people trouble. These inseam pockets slash pockets. I think this is the easiest pocket in the world to make. Me too. I, okay. I would... I, I mean, a well, patch, patch pocket is pretty okay. easy too. But, but yeah. I would say the welts and like the tailored, those are the, the more challenging ones. Yeah. Than... Well, I think a slash pocket can be challenging too. I... You just said they were the easiest. Oh, I, th I thought we were talking about inseam. I think of inseam and slashes being really similar They're not. in their. The slash pocket is like what you have in the front of your jeans where you yeah. see the fabric behind it. Okay. Okay. An inseam pocket is actually in the seam. So you think an inseam pocket is easier than a slash pocket? More, you you will have less difficulty. Uh -huh. Okay, with the fabric laying flat. Like, okay, I, I see. People, I see what you're saying. Do you see what I'm saying? I yes. see people like, you know, mess it up by yes. not like. So, okay, the inseam pocket is you're just you know you you're taking your the the line of your you know St your line of your seam you've mm -hmm. just got basically a straight seam might be a little bit you know curved, curved or something and you're just putting that pocket in there i think sometimes so this is interesting because i think sometimes people find that more challenging because they're like working with bulk or they find it difficult to visualize the order of how to do this because they're like wait where's the pocket where does the pocket go which layers do i stitch through and which do i not i've said i've seen people have okay. trouble you see what i'm saying but that this is should, just good. It should not be that way this because, is, okay, so, interesting. so you have you have two pieces of fabric uh -huh. and you have a pocket shape that looks right. sort of like a kidney. Yes. Okay. Yes, the kidney. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you sew right sides together on one with, with you know, say the front panel. Of right. Your, okay. And then you do right sides together on the other panel. Then you open it up and you press it flat. Yep. Then you put. So it's hanging out. So you've got this panel and this pocket kidney shape hanging right. out, right? So then you put those together. You put that those two shapes together, right sides together, right? right. And you start sewing your seam. And mm -hmm. when you get to your pocket, your seam changes to around that kidney shape right. and then back into the seam again. I don't know what could be simpler. You don't think that? Yeah, I've I've seen people get confused to me that is that. like so simple like okay yeah but maybe i have a good mental picture of maybe it maybe i'm thinking a little bit more about when the closure is incorporated there like a zipper people get confused that's, but that's more of a slash pocket yeah yeah or, no you're right you're right maybe obviously i'm confused okay <laughs> obviously we won't let mallory i will not let mallory be putting pockets in that's my right garment. that's right no i think i think i'm i think i I'm use a confused. slash pocket uh -huh. if i have a pair of pants or a skirt right and i just want to put a hook there right yeah. or a button okay well it's, i yeah. just put slash pockets in my jenny trousers yeah okay and the recommended closure there was this lapped zipper Okay. Yeah. And instead, I put in an invisible zipper. Uh huh. And it was the easiest thing ever. Yeah. And people, people in the group were like, "That's going to be really hard," or da 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 da. I guess sometimes I think of a slash pocket as easier in some ways because it's like you make the whole front of the garment. Let's like of the whole okay. front of the pants. I, I don't find it difficult either. Well, I'm just I know. saying I, know. I think other people find it difficult getting it to lay flat. Yes. Yes. Well, okay, I think that. And if it pulls and there's wrinkles, your pants are too tight. That's right. It's a fit I, issue I just think and a that pressing... is so funny when people go, what did I do to my pocket? And I'm like, not your pocket, it's your pants. Right, right. If your, pan if your pockets are bunching up in a slash pocket, then it's probably too tight. And that is, yeah, so right. we're, we're all over the place here because I got confused about inseam pockets and stuff. So anyway, yes. my bad. <laughs> Mallory's but, a mess. Mallory's a mess. <laughs> so... 
you can, of course, elect to put your closure in a different place altogether if you wanted to just not deal with closure right. and pocket the same seam. But, like, when I had people do their ginger jeans, I had them just base that, you know, like, pocket right. thing together. And maybe it's a better idea not to do that so you can see if you are having the pulling, you know, with a pocket actually all constructed. I didn't have them construct the pocket bag to baste it together. You oh, see what I'm uh-huh. saying? Okay. Yeah, so, but yeah, if you have, have no, pulling. if you have the right fit, though, it yeah. should, just shouldn't pull. I think people also can press and distort yes. that, right? Because you end That's up where everybody need cutting that, a slash Here on I the go bias. again about when people say, well, just give it a good hard press. That can so screw you up. Yeah, don't give yeah, it a good that, hard that press. Then you're distorting the fabric and it'll never, gentle, you'll never get it right. Precise press. Yeah, maybe. or a finger press before right. you decide. Um, so, so, sorry that we got a. Uh, Excited. Maybe it won't sound as silly as I think it's going to. It sounds fine. Um, so, all right, Mallory's in, not putting my inseam pockets in. That's a lot. That's time. right. That's right. I um, but I want to go back to that invisible zipper there. Like, so you're talking about an invi- Let's go back because yeah. I think you got me confused. You put an invisible zipper in a <laughs> slash pocket. You are correct. <laughs> yeah, because you. I believe you may have I said, said inseam. You may have. Yeah, my bad. My bad. So you can't what, put a closure. Well, you can put a closure in an inseam pocket. I do it all the time. Right. I'm just, <laughs> oh, I'm just yeah. envisioning what, oh. what I was saying. I, I want to say oh. that I thought it was easy to do it that way because the yes. whole front of my pant was constructed. Right. I put the closure in just like if there had been no pocket there. Right. I was just sewing through a few right. more layers. Right. So I was like, this is fine. Right. It, it was not. You know, people are like, oh, well, you published this mod. So well, you where published was this it? hack. But you said they put a lap zipper. Where'd they put a lap zipper? They put it there. They just used the seam allowance. Oh, you know, so they put a lap zipper lap there. Zipper it. Which would be a little bit more Which bulky. Is, it would work. It was fine. Yeah. And also, I think that those pants, I think we're going to do an episode of, uh, feel free to comment mm-hmm. on the episode, and I want to talk about those. Those could be a little bit more utilitarian. And I don't know, maybe I wouldn't want an invisible zipper and like, my gardening pants. I don't know. Uh, I used to wear almost exclusively invisible zippers. An invisible side zippered pants. Yeah. I loved it. It was a trouser I made. Right. And it was my favorite pant. But yeah, I don't think it was like a bad choice, but honestly, it took fewer steps to put the invisible zipper in. It was just. And then it looks cleaner zip, too. Zip. And it's not as bulky. It looked amazing. It feels it's awesome. It's also not as bulky. Yes. So those, but those slash pockets, you're right, mom. If people are having the pulling, it's not the pocket. Yeah. It's the fit. Yeah. Yeah, if you're having that. Uh, but something, if you are having issues with your pocket fabric flipping out mm-hmm. on on any of that, these and that, pockets. You mean when after you use it or? After you use it uh-huh. or maybe just the way it's presenting right. after it's done. Uh-huh. A step that I really love that isn't always included in every pattern is understitching. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen patterns where right. it's not included, but when you sew that pocket bag to the front of the pants right. where that cutout is, yes. um, or, I mean, I know it's not always pants, but right. in this example, understitching is just, it's magical. Right. You're like, oh, it's just laying it so nicely. And yeah. like you said, too, you can always use a chain, yeah. a cur- you know, yeah. a thread chain, or figure out where you can tack it mm-hmm. to a seam right? to hold it down. Tack it to a seam. Right. Um, I think the Jenny trousers, you're actually supposed to stitch it down. It's part of the design. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Uh And the pants fit loosely enough that it wasn't like. It's free enough. Coming up or anything. Yeah, Yeah, it was fine. Also, on pockets, um, I hesitate to make a blanket statement, but you can always, almost always use a lighter weight fabric for your pockets than you use for your garment. Yes. and what? But I will tell you, with your dad. He he used he wore like a khaki. Uh huh. Um, this is before he started wearing like more like cargo pants, which and did turned he, out to be better for did him. Did he wear out? He would wear the pockets pocket out because bag out. you know the pants would be like a twill, and the pocket would be you know just a cotton woven. Right. And the thing is, is he's keys he was in putting there right he was stuff. putting things in like keys you know that were obviously testing that. Uh-huh. I used to just go in. And take a piece of denim and like sew a pocket. Yeah, right like on top of it. Over the pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would just like read for. And the other thing that that helped because of the keys and the pokey things or whatever is he wouldn't get a hole in the twill. Yeah, because right. what would happen is he Protected. would start poking through the uh-huh. twill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you know, 
I I am always one to jump on the feminist issues and clothing bandwagon. So, you know, absolutely. But the trend of the skinny jeans, like the skin tight yeah. mm-hmm. jeans, which I also enjoy wearing. I, yeah, I do too. Um, it's hard to put a really accommodating pocket in those. Well, a lot of times my front pocket's a faux pocket. And, and the back pocket is a real pocket. You mean like by choice, right? Yes. Okay. By choice. Because people. Because I don't even like. I can't stand anything else in there. Yeah. Because so so people will say, "Oh my gosh, all these ready to wear, you know, clothes have no pockets." And yeah, it cuts okay. down cost. Cuts but down I, on fabric. Here's the other thing. I don't really use a front pocket in a pair of jeans ever, Be- just because of the reason is. Then I go to sit down and whatever is in there bothers yeah, me. It's like my phone gets so big. Right. Our phones are so big. Da 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 da. So or even if it would be a handful of change or a, you know a cough drop, that right, it bothers me. Now on those Jenny trousers with that looser fitting trousers. This is where I need a fanny pack or a belt bag or whatever bag. it is. Mom found the nice word for what it. Was, there was another word waist, too. Waist, waist bag. bag. That 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 sounds, that sounds like kind of weird. Pooping. I, no. <laughs> No, that's like no, what, sounds that's like what I stomach. take to pick up my dog's poop no, in is a waste bag. Yeah, oh, I was thinking it kind of sounds like my floppy belly right now. That I, I'm getting rid of. This is my waste bag. It's a belly bag. Yeah. So anyway. Um, you know, because they put those bags on horses yeah. that are in uh, the handsome cab. Sa- saddle bags are different things. No, no, no. no. It's a poop bag. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know You know, so that they don't poop on the city streets. Yes. Yes. It's like a poop bucket. So, so yeah, with sometimes... Oh, that would be a word for pocket, a poop bucket. A poop yeah, bucket. Yeah. So, uh, when when people complain, though, about ready-to-wear not always having real pockets, right. sometimes I'm like, well, I've made faux pockets in my skin On pants. purpose, yeah. And also, sometimes I do want the pants to be so tight that a pocket would pull. Okay. It just would. Like This is why I would. wear a bra. Oh, okay. because my so bra your boobs serves aren't in your as my. <laughs> <laughs> so your boobs don't so end up in your don't pockets. Don't up in my slash pockets. <laughs> but, um, oh my god, that's the that's tr- a good one. But that is the truth too. <laughs> it's so funny because it's true. Oh my god. No, if I took my bra off right now, I could make my boobs hit my hit my legs. Anyway, elaborate, <laughs> clarify. I will clarify. Because <laughs> you can hold your lots of stuff in your bra. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I actually, I wear, I have this one sports bra that, like, it's a bra underneath, and then it has, you know, just a, another piece of fabric yeah, over, over the top. It. It's got a perfect pocket. Okay. So this does, though, in form. So they're bra pockets. We haven't talked about those. Okay. They're not on the Brockets. list. <laughs> Brockets. Brockets. Um, <laughs> this has kind of informed, though, some of the clothing that I styles that I want to make for myself. Like right. I like the skinny jeans. Right. But if I am like I really want more pocket options, I would explore putting a side patch pocket on my skinny jeans and for my phone. Like cargo yes, skinny a jeans. A cargo yep. okay. And I do that <laughs> in some of my what I call pajama loose yeah. style pants. Yeah. I have like a cargo pocket because I could do an inseam pocket. Yeah. Okay. But if I put a phone in an inseam pocket, it like flaps on my thigh. Okay. I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Different fabrics, different styles. Right, because it's are gonna loose support, in there. Yeah, they're gonna support. So if I pockets. put I actually put a patch pocket. I measure my phone, whatever yep, size yep. phone my is. I have, you know, and I put it like sort of high on my thigh, mm-hmm. and make it just right for my phone. And it slip. And I love that. Yeah, that's my fave. So something I didn't realize I like so much when I had these Jenny trousers is I actually kind of walk around with my hands in my pockets. Yeah, sometimes yeah, I'm like, yeah. which I don't, of course, can't do in like a pair of skinny jeans or something like that. But so I would be a little kinder to ready to wear or like to yourself with the skinny jeans because like no, when people complain about not having pockets, I I think why well, wouldn't put anything I wouldn't in want there a pocket anyway in that, in that yeah, right in that. Now bonnet. I think one of the best things people started putting pockets in were wedding dresses. Yeah, you yeah. know because. You can't even carry your chapstick, right? No, um, no, that that is a good right. point. Um, and then some people they'll they'll come out in the group and they'll be like, "Everyone's gonna hate me, but I don't like to put pockets in things because of the added bulk or the whatever." Well, no, you know? that, and that is true. And I, um, so my husband used to carry a wallet, and he would wear cargo shorts and right. like cargo pants for it. And then he got a new phone case. That can hold his cards. Holds and his cash. credit card or whatever. So when he was saying, "I need new shorts," and I'm like, "Well, I already blew 
our money on new fabric for me, so I have to make you shorts. Um, it, it, you know, and I said, do you need all those pockets? He says, no. Are you going to make him wear those floral shorts out of that twill you That's bought? right, out of that stretch twill. Yeah. He said, I don't need the cargo pockets because now I don't carry a wallet like I used to. And this idea became attractive to me. I was like, can I, like, not carry a purse? You know, because well, I, what I, I carry. carry in a purse yeah. and stuff. You know, right. I'm always, even if it's a little bag or something like right. that. But I don't know. I don't know if I can give up the purse. With So I, I have a purse. Yeah, you carry a purse. And then I have a wallet. That's what I carry. I carry a little wallet. Right. That, that has, you know, the strap. On. So, But I can take my wallet out of my purse. Yeah. That's and what I yeah. have. I carry a right. very small right. crossbody right. that is like phone and That's, money. And right. Lipstick. It's just a little bit thicker than my phone when I'm but finished. But it's, it's not the... It's not the reality of not having a purse. It's still a purse. You know, it's it still, is. It's still a it's purse. It's like a wallet with a strap. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, could I, you know, but I think I'd have to make myself okay. a lot of Eventually, cargo. Eventually, phones things. will be about, you know, the size of a half dollar no, everything or whatever. Is, I have my watch. I, oh, I yeah. could almost do yeah, everything you don't with need my your watch. Phone. Yeah, with yeah, one day. So see, that's going to happen. But one day, the word pocket will be obsolete because we'll all have <laughs> microchips in our or, brains or, or we'll use the, we'll, we'll, we'll use the yeah. word pot we'll, they'll name something some electronic device they'll name it pocket okay it's gonna come full circle and instead of it's like the word pocket will just be synonymous with watch and right it's pocket right watch right again. well you know <laughs> there there are words obviously in our language that if you weren't live when they start using them for instance, dial your phone. We don't dial our phone film, anymore. The word film? No, phone. And Di- I know, but also oh, film. film. Right, film. Right. A record. Yeah, record. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Record. Um, you know, record player. But, well, but, I, but I mean, yeah. like, we don't dial our phone anymore. We tap our phone. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because we started out with a dial. Right, but, like, the word film, like, we're not putting anything onto film when Not we do anymore. that with our, with our phone. So, right. But I wonder if the word film actually came from something else. I wonder if it has anything to do with, like, the word feel, which is, like, Well, thread. I'm thinking that there was a film of silver on the hmm. cellulose. Well, well, I don't know. We'll follow up on that in the next yeah. episode. That's a good, good, oh, Mom. Maybe we should do a Mom. word. What? I'm so excited. Maybe just, we should do, like, a word podcast. Okay, I, think I want to do a. Can I do a? Can we have a new podcast no. called ZD's Pissed Off about this? That's this podcast. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's, that's, it's called Sewing Out Loud. <laughs> um, How about Pissed Out Loud? Okay. So, yeah, ZD's, ZD is angry. That's called Sewing Out Loud. Okay. So, one thing we didn't cover were like flappy pockets, pockets with, with flaps on them. Um, well, usually they're a patch pocket. Well, a welt pocket mean? though can oh, also have the and a welt pocket the 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 flap can go in it or on uh, top yes, of it. Yes, and actually, um, in the Wikipedia article here, they're calling that a tailored pocket because it's usually on a jacket, right? So like, just yeah, FYI, but a menswear type. Jacket. It is just as ZD describes. It's a welt pocket that has this flap so that it's can the go same, in or out. You know, there, we we talked about all the pockets. We just didn't talk about the flaps that went but under them. I do want to talk a little bit about it's a. Is a technique that we've covered before, but when you have a pocket or um, anything that has like a shaped this shaped flap, let's see, like it's a like the the flap that we're talking about on this welt pocket right. is just cur like a, right. a rounded corner right. rectangle, mm-hmm. or you can have pockets that have like a sharp V, a point uh-huh. at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And I just read a review of a pattern that had belt loops that had V's at the end. Uh huh. And the tester said that the V's were challenging. Because they don't know how to sew a point. Right. Mm-hmm. Or, well, and I what? wonder not just a point, but sewing these shape type uh-huh. things. Whenever you have to sew something that's a small shape like that, including right. a scallop, like right. a scallop hem right. or anything, yeah, ZD, ZD's nodding. She knows exactly what I'm about to say. Yes. I know where you're going, baby. Draw the shape mm-hmm. and then so sew. So draw the shape on the fabric. On the fabric. Do not cut right. like some itty-bitty little V pattern yep. out and then try to stitch it. So draw your shape. So I'm drawing the shape of my apple yes. on the back. Or your star. Or my star. Or your scallop Or whatever. Tent. Yeah, my scallop tent. And I'm drawing it on the fabric, and I'm laying right side to right side on another piece of fabric, and then I'm stitching on that line I drew. 
And then I go back and I clip away the, the excess back. fabric. So you, you, this was like a rectangle or a square right. of fabric. You got to draw your specified shape, even if that specified right. shape is something as simple as a rectangle with a rounded corner. Okay. And, it can offer mm -hmm. you so much more stability to have that full square of fabric. Right, Mom? Yep. And okay. this is another ZD rule. Yeah. If you're sewing a point, you don't pivot. Yep. Unless... It's top stitching. Y yes. It's the only place you pivot at your angle. Otherwise, you stitch across the angle with one or two small yeah, stitches. Truncate that point. Because if you don't, you don't have room to turn that fabric. This this applies to collar points. Um, to any the, any point, point you can but think but of. But also, I just want to bring up the point on the scallop, the uptick. Yes. People don't always think Anything of that as a point. Anything that is a, that is a okay. severe point mm -hmm. okay and i would say like anything what greater than what oh i don't know 35 40 degrees 45 degrees you mean like as far as an angle goes because you have to have room to turn so a 90 degree angle definitely you have to you have to truncate you truncate and if that scallop of course that's a really it's tight 80. angle well right. it's 90 degrees and dan i mean no it's not Okay. Well, I, you know, they're right next to each other. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you'd call that 90 degrees. Well, but, yeah, you need to truncate those. But what I'm saying is, you know, if it's a big wide angle, like say right. it's a 70 degree yes. angle, you might not have to do that because you've got room to turn. Well, I'm, th I'm thinking all acute angles need to be truncated. Right. There you go. Okay. Uh, so uh, from 90 degrees, degrees to down. acute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Acute is less than 90. I'm just even thinking if it was. 95 you'd yeah still okay if it was I 95 see. you know i see what you're saying test test and you know what it may have to do with the bulk of the fabric, fabric. right there yeah so what this yep. does when you truncate that angle it seems really counterintuitive but what it does is it reduces bulk when you turn it right right side out. because it it if you if you think about it and and you've just turned that and it's even more cute than your 90 uh -huh. degree or whatever you no matter how close you trim, you've got fabric that has to fit in that little spot when you when you turn it. And it's not going to fit. Yeah. So if so you... so what do you get? And I see them all the time. Everybody yeah. and everybody goes, "What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. What you did wrong is you nobody told you. No one told you. Nobody you gave you yeah. the proper yeah. instruction. And I'll bet you anything, the pattern didn't tell you to do it. And I just think that that person who was saying that the the belt loops with that were yes. V shaped, I yeah. bet that they cut out I bet they yeah but they told them to do that they yeah. told them to cut out little strips and cut out the points ahead of time and like if you just think about sewing on that you're going to destroy your fabric no matter how right. stable it you is you can't so get right it is so easy to avoid that heartache there it is just um that that will definitely uh, change your sewing game so make sure to get So when we were that. talking about the heart pocket mm -hmm. that's basically what we do we points. draw a heart mm -hmm. okay and we sew around the whole thing. We haven't cut the heart shape. Right. We've got two squares that we, or whatever, that we made a heart inside of. And when we got to the point at the bottom, we truncated. And when we were up at the divot at the point at the top, we truncated. So we sewed across. We did not pivot there. And then when we turned it inside out, it was the most amazing, amazing heart. heart. Well, we trimmed it and then turned it inside Well, right. Out, right? We did trim it, like it and clipped our curves. It Clip your curves, point. people. Yeah. Clip your curves. Okay, so I think we we did a really wonderful set of tangents here. Just some cursory, you know, discussion of pockets. You know, that was fabulous. And y'all learned about the brocket. Oh, you know, the, the bra last, pocket. The last thing I want to say is I think almost all the time my favorite way of finishing a pocket bag it's like sew the pocket bag together and then like overcast it or serge it. A lot of – I've seen people want to do French seams to finish the edge of a Too pocket. Too much bulk. Yeah, ZD yep. just looked terrified. You couldn't see. But she's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, my, keep, my, keep favorite, my favorite way is to use the cover stitch serge machine, you know. Do the five-thread safety and do stitch. It, do it, yeah. Right. Yeah, do the, a safety yes. – you know, so you've got your – you know, your actual seam is made with your chain stitch and mm -hmm. then you have the, your surging over the I edge. I agree. That's, you know, I know some people, uh, you know. That's how I make pillowcases. And I couture, consider pillowcases big pockets. That's right. A couture gown or a couture, not a gown, probably might not have pockets, but like a couture jacket, sometimes they'll bind the edge. Okay. Like with a Hong Kong finish or something. Well, don't kid yourself on thinking that could. 
tour shops don't have sergers. That's, that's they what do. I want to bring up. Yeah. They do. Especially if that pocket When you bag... look back at, 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 you know, couture made, handmade, whatever, um, garments from 1930 and you see all of this you know hand stitching or hong kong finish done by what whatever they didn't have sergers yeah okay that's why that's why it wasn't done that way it doesn't exactly. mean you can't do it that way now too but what i'm saying is there's so many things about that overcast machine that decrease bulk yes that so make it nice i just want to say that is the way that i would have people i think that even the ginger jeans she maybe has you that's how I do. And she even has you do it. It's not like a French seam, but she has you have the surging or your finished edge inside of the pocket. And I'm okay with that laying on mm -hmm. my skin. Yeah. Okay. I, well, and that's so, how when yeah. the um, the inseam pocket, yeah. I surge around there surge to finish that. that. Yes. Yeah. So just heads up. I do. Th I think that that's appropriate for so many applications. Reduces bulk, reduces time. I do not mind looking at the inside of my jeans and seeing the surged edge of a pocket. Is what I'm saying. Right? No. Yeah. I actually I love the way surging. Yeah, works. I like it too. Right. I, 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 I think it's. No I'll put fun um, in there. There's right? definitely garments that have surging on the outside that have that overcast sure. look. You know, they started making T-shirts with that overcast on the outside because it was pretty and presentable. Yes. Okay, well, we hope you enjoyed our, our pocket, um, pocket. You'll never uh, think of pockets the same ever again. I'm trying to pocket podcast. Pocket podcast. It's a pocket podcast. Um, you all have a great rest of your week. We look forward to being in your earbuds again next Friday. And you can get to us on Instagram. We're at So Here Calm. And ZD, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.